Good evening, this is Mary DeFawa. Welcome to our second Zoom Groom program offered by Mid-States Welsh Terrier Club in cooperation with WTCA. Tonight's program on the pet clip is presented by Kathy Rost. Our next Zoom Groom on the basic pet strip is scheduled for Monday, June 28th, when Jean Callens will demonstrate and field questions on the basic pet strip. We'll begin tonight's program with Kathy's video demo, which will be followed by Q&A. I'm going to share the, the pet clip video now. This is the before picture uh, before our clipping. Are they used what they can okay. use? This is the clipper we are using. Um, and we are starting on the jacket. This is a 7F wide blade that we're going to do the jacket with. You can start anywhere you like with, uh, with the jacket but I usually like to start at the shoulder and work down and it's just my preference you can go any anywhere you want to start but you just always go in the same direction as the hair and you lay the clipper flat on the dog you don't dig in you lay it flat and you just follow the hair line and you just take it all the way around all the I don't know so that I'm all the all the black. I usually take the noose off just so I can get to the to the um, parts easier. And I go all the way up to the back of the ear. Anything that's black, I'm taking off. And again, I always go in the length of the of the coat. Now this is a really wide blade that Jean kind of introduced me to uh, just recently and I really do love it because it you get the dog done in about half the time. But if you have a regular seven, um, that's fine too. I use this seven for years and years, so. But this one here really lets you zoom through the coat and um, you don't really get any lines on it because it's so wide. So I take this, I guess I do all the black. I let the clipper do the work. I don't drag it through. You should try to get them brushed out before you start. It's a lot less uh, wear and tear on your clippers, on you, and on your dog. And uh, this is Peggy, and she has been clipped for a lot of years and she still maintains her color so and she's pretty patient with me I take the top of the tail again the same direction you just follow the curves Now you can take the inside of the tail, the can, a little bit tighter. I always start with the seven and decide if I need to go tighter at a later date. But usually a seven is all you need for the back of the tail. And I just take the, I keep working my clippers down. They're starting to drag a little. I'm going to stop and I'm going to spray them with some. I've gotten the black down. I literally went all over her body uh, with a seven, and I took a I took the jacket, so um, went down to the shoulders to the elbow. That elbow bone, that's your guide. Stop there. Now, when I do the underneath, I am going to start underneath the chin, and again the same way the hair is growing, I clean that all off. And there's um, actually, if you look. 
there's a couple of little whiskers underneath the chin. You can kind of use that as a, see they were right there. You can use it as a little guide that don't go farther up than that. If you take that straight down, it's a good marker and we'll do scissor work on the rest of the beard. But you take the front down, again with the same blade, and you just take it even, you go straight down. You don't go underneath, you just take that straight down so that it's a nice clean look. And you go all the way around. And again, you stop at the elbow. So, um, you know, any colics that you see, you just take those off. You just blend them right in with this clipper. And then that's pretty much the jacket and the and the uh, chest. So. Okay. Okay, now I uh, would like for us to take it, this off. Welsh Terriers always seem to end up with pantaloons, and we really don't want that. So we are actually going to lay the clipper on the hip, and then where the hip starts dipping in, we're going to stop and do the rest with scissors. So you can feel about right there is where her hip goes, and then it, you can see that it drops right down in there. So that's kind of a good... Um, also, the other thing is don't hesitate to stop and use your spray lube to keep them um, well cooled and oiled, especially if they start dragging. Do you see I can take this right down? I'm taking all those pantaloons off. And then you just keep your blade flat onto the dog. You don't dig in. And you can see how the pantaloons have pretty much disappeared. Then I take my seven and I just clear all of this on her butt. Whoops. Sorry, girl. And there's a little bit more here. I'll go back this and um, I will go back and do uh, the underbelly and catch the rest of that with my tighter blade. But again, here's the, I think this is like such a telltale sign on Welsh. Um, when they, they have those pantaloons. Again, you can see the bump and then where it goes in. So you're gonna just gonna take it right down to where it goes down. And then again, you clear off all this junk. And this is still with that wide seven. Okay. And now she's, um, She's got like a pattern into her now. So. Okay. All right, now we're going, we've got all the black done. We've got all the jacket off. We've got her chest out. I'm just gonna put the pattern on her head. And that's with a number 10 yeah. blade now. Yeah, and so we, we switched it to the interchangeable clippers. It's the same clipper with a new blade. Some people use a 15, that's a little close. Sometimes you can burn them. But uh, I like the 10, it, it kind of, you get more blending with the 10. So, I start above the eyebrows. I don't take the eyebrows off. And I just get rid of all of this first. And you're going to take that, and you're going to take it to the black, but I wouldn't worry, I'll blend that in the meeting in a minute. But this is just getting all of this off. You're going to do inside the ear down. You're going to take all that off. And then you're going to go from the corner of the eye to the corner of the mouth. And you're going to take all of that off. If there's any curly cues or any cowlicks, you just, they just get shaved right off. But you see how my line is? Now, I am going to go back and touch up where I came up with my blade, but I can see what I'm doing now because I took all that extra hair off. So, that's a good outline for that side. And then I go on the other side. Again, I find her eye in there somewhere, and I take it right off 
to the corner of the mouth. You can almost feel it dipping in from the cheek in. You don't want to dip in, so you, when you, you kind of want to stay on that wide, flat side. Again, you kind of clear off that ear. So, that, you have, this is what your, this is kind of our uh, canvas right now to do a head. At this point, you can do the ears with the same blade, or you can save them for last. I'm gonna go ahead and do the ears and get all the clipper work done first. Again, you go with the hair. You take off all of the tan. You, you prefer using the tan? I, I do like using the tan. I, I'll use a 15, I don't have a problem with it. But if you're not real used to the clippers or if this is like your first time starting, the tens are safer. And uh, you can always go back, but you don't want to accidentally cut or burn them. So you, I, I have no problem using a 15, but a lot of times, especially with a pet, that I'm not staging the coat, I'll just take the, just, I'll just take them off with a 10. And there's really very little difference between the 10 and the 15. But again, you just take, go down that whole edge, then I lift it up and I take it on the inside. Point your clippers out and just take that all off. So now we have kind of a... You, you can pull the hair on the inside with a uh, hemisphere. But... Okay, ready? Okay, the only thing left really with clipper work right now is remember we came here with a 10 and then um, we had this with a 7. So what we're going to do now is just blend that 7 and 10 with a 7 so that now there's no bump and it looks like it just grows that way. So, so you just take it now and see there's no bumps, it's nice and smooth. Okay. And I finished clearing off the, I just follow the lines. Take it around her vulva, clear that area out. It's much more sanitary. Again, go with the go with the way the hair is going because we don't want to nick her. Okay, and then we're gonna do just clear that off a little bit. No dingle boys. Now this is the part where if you really, really want to, you can go up the tail to make it really tight. Um, I usually don't have to, but if you want to do that, that's fine. I'm just going to show you with the scissors now. You just can go along here, pick up any loose hairs. You can take your scissors and go on either side of the tail. You can take off any little nubbin that you have left. And this leaves a nice clean looking tail. And any kind of anytime you see a cow like it disappears, just take it off. Okay, and that's her that's her so to get all of our clipper work finished we're going to go ahead and we're going to shave her tummy and um i go right i go right on the inside of the leg and i just take all of this off and you can go like i know the boys this won't make much sense but like to the second set of nipples <laughs> <laughs> and you just clear all that out. Okay. 
Okay, ready? Yep. Okay, and now I'm done with my clippers. Whatever you do, never lay them on the table with the dog because or even here. it will they will kick it off and and it happens all the time. Same with here. Yeah, another table yeah. because you're going to trip on that cord and pull them on the ground. So we thing is put them on the ground. We always lay them on the ground. For one thing, they'll cool faster on the ground. Yeah. And the other thing is, as you know, there's just absolutely no way they're going to fall and, and shatter. Okay, so now what I'm going to go ahead and do is finish off the ears. I take uh, my scissors. You can, you, Jean likes to use uh the curved edge I learned on the straight edge. You just follow the edge of the of the uh, ear. You work really hard not to catch it, cause Your skin. <laughs> yeah, cause it'll. You know, the ears are real vascular. They'll bleed and bleed and bleed. So you really want to be careful that you just follow the ear. Just kind of lay your scissors on the leather, and then just follow it up. And then that ear is all done. Like you poopy. <laughs> Not a happy kid. A little stick eye. <laughs> and again on this one, it's the same thing. I just pull, kind of pull the hair out, lay my clippers along. Take them from the bottom. I always go from the bottom up because this way I'm always clipping away from the dog's head. In case they move, you don't like poke them in the eye or have any accidents. Okay, and you just take that again. And as you can see, it all it's all off. And there. Now, other than pulling the hair out of the ears, her ears are all done. Start on the head. Okay. Now we're going to start on the head. We're going to brush everything forward. You can kind of see our um, pattern in there. We're going to lay the scissors on the top. And we're just going to... These are thinning shears. Our thinning shears, you're right. And we're just going to thin these out. So, and what I'm doing is I'm laying the scissors on the top of the head. And I'm not going in so that... here okay so then so that um, we can we can get that brow line then what I do is I brush everything away from like from the center back kind of like alfalfa used to wear his hair and then I take my thinning shears and I just thin that out from the corner of the eye you're going to take everything out from the corner of the eye like that and so you can kind of see how it's coming but again corner of the eye you take everything off from the corner of the eye straight back okay and then you do the other eyebrow the same way you don't pull forward and try to cut this way. You pull them to the side. I have to get in front of you now. Okay, you have to get in front of you to the side and then you take that all off. And again, you comb and you scissor and you comb and you scissor. It's kind of like when you're plucking. You you do it a little bit and then you re then you recomb. So you're just going to, you're not going in. I, when I'm doing this, I'm going straight back. So that this is, this is basically her eyes now. Now that when we start doing, we don't want to bear this in between like they do a schnauzer. We're just going to take a little bit of this out here to show some definition of the brow without without making that big hole. We don't want to fall like the lakey. like the lakey. And then you can kind of even pull this out. Now she hasn't been hand plucked in 
oh, years and years, but yet I can still grab enough hair to pull out just enough to give her some definition in there. So. Again, you comb again. I think this one's a little bit longer than my other one. A little bushier, I think. Too. Yeah, let me get this one down. Again, flat down the back, down the top. Again, the way the hair grows, we're always cutting the way the hair grows. And then back this way. And you go again I'm going the way of the hair okay so that's kind of her eyebrows you, again you can kind of play with pulling out some of these long ones but that's pretty much how you do the eyebrows now we don't want we want to keep her head looking like a brick. No muzzle puffs. No muzzle puffs. So see all of this? We're going to clear that out. She's not real long. Again, you go the way of the, of the clippers, or the way the hair grows, rather. And you just kind of thin this out. You don't do anything under the eye. You want to leave that full. She was groomed with, she was our training dog and, and uh, she was cleaned out a little bit under the eye, but that's okay. It's going to grow, but so this is going to be a little bit longer, but we want to match this to that. You okay. <laughs> okay. So, and then we're going to take, we don't want a beard. We just want like a goatee. So we're going to bring this down. That same angle as the jawline and bring it down to blend in to this. And I do go back and forth. I'll do one side, then I'll go back to the other side. So don't think that, you know, once you finish one side that you're done. I, I truly bounce back between the two. So on this side, again, we're going to brush it down. She's got more hair on this side. And then, again, the way the hair is growing, we just clean this out. We want it so that if they're walking and the wind hits it, that they don't have this big bush in their eyes, that it kind of stays in place. So that's why we're cleaning some of this out. And again, every we always want it on a slant, so we're giving her that not long like in a wire fox terrier look, but just long like in everything is blending. If you want to do this with scissors, that's fine too. The shears are sometimes not as um, forgiving. So that's, come back here. You can see that her beard isn't real long. Again, you can take some of these stragglies out, but you don't want to bear it there. Okay, and that's pretty much her head. Okay, I'm going to start working on the legs. Um, I, what I do is I start by defining my foot. And so I take this, whoops, the wrong scissors. Yes. Hold on. Thank you. Yours, so. <laughs> so I'm going to um, I'm going to go around the foot. I'm going to clean the bottom of the feet. You can go use clippers inside. You don't have to, 
but you do want them off. And then again, the way the hair is growing, I go straight down right around the whole foot. And that gives me uh, a rounded. Yeah, it gives me a start of a rounded foot. Plus now I know where her foot is when, so I can scissor down. So now I've got I'm bleeding crazy here. Take it off just a second because I'm. Okay. All right. Ready? Okay, so we're back. I'm going to now, I've got the foot shaped. And I'm going to, again, we, we brought this down to the elbow so we know where our elbow is. So we're going to bring a straight line from the. Whoops, wrong here. Here. Um, again, we don't try to leave any equipment on the table so that we are, we can take, we've made our pattern. So now we're just going to fill this in. She's not real long, so I don't have to take a bucket load off of her, but you can see that she's getting a, she has a line. So now we can take that line and go all the way around. We just follow that line all the way around, around the foot, because we've got our line. And again, always the way the hair grows. I'm gonna go in between the legs and follow that. So they're supposed to end up looking like pillars. So we wanna take this. Some people like to do this with thinning shears and that's fine as long as you follow the lines. And so now you can see the difference. Here's one foot done and one foot that we haven't started. So again we're going to start by lifting the paw taking all this stuff off of the bottom of the paw. It's good if you clip their nails first because then they're standing on their foot and not their nail and you can get a truer um, line. But again, we comb this down and then we follow with our scissors in the same direction all the way around the paw. Oh, I just cut myself again. I'm cutting myself with my scissors here for some reason tonight. Okay, so now I have my lines. I go back to our elbow where we clipped and we just take that line straight down all the way around and you comb and you and you scissor and you comb and you scissor that's just the whole trick to getting it even and i'm just going around making the pillar from the template that I made with the feet and the elbow. I'll brush all that out. You know, the trick is not to have okay. stragglers here for them. Okay, so now we're going to work on the back legs. Remember, we took it down flat over to here so we don't have those pantaloons. And we're going to blend it into the foot. Again, we're going to do the same thing with the back feet that we did with the front feet. We're going to clear out the bottoms of the feet. Whoops. And we're going to go around the tops just because we're getting our 
we're getting our pattern. So now you can see I have a pattern on the feet and the leg. So now what I can do, again, um, going the way of the clippers, I follow this line and I just clean this up. Another way that I do it is I'll come underneath and clean it from the bottom too. So, so that's about all the furnishings that you want to leave. You really don't want to have big bushy. See how that blends in nice now and you don't have to worry about the pantaloons. And then again like the other ones you just go around and trim up the feet so you have no stragglies. You already have your template so you know where to stop and where to blend to. And some I'll pull them out a little bit. You can do this with thinning shears if you're if you're not real sure of your pattern yet. Um, when you get really, really good, you can do all this pretty much with clippers, but I wouldn't suggest that, and I don't do it often, but um, because you end up sometimes with a scalped looking dog. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but she has a really good coat to work, so I don't want to make her naked. And I just clean this all up. You go straight down the back of the hock like you would a show dog. See the, you can see all the extras that get there. You just take those off. And, and really and truly you can go crazy and just keep scissoring and scissoring and coming back. And then there's a time you gotta just stop because the dog won't have any coat left. But again, I have my pattern. I just bring this, whoops, only a little while longer, and I just take all those flyaways off so that it's nice and smooth. I go into the bottom of the foot again, take off all this junk off the bottom. You can go in and clip them if you want, that's fine. Um, if you do that, especially in the winter, be careful that ice doesn't get in, or and snow doesn't get inside the pad because that hair does protect them from the elements. And then I brush it, and I have I just go around, get my pattern. I got to walk in front of you. I got to get my pattern on her foot again. Then at this point, it's just blending in the bottom of the coat. To the foot that we, you know, we know where the lines are now. So all we have to do is kind of blend it in. Okay, the last thing we have to do is to get these little tuck-up hairs. We start at the top and we just Let me angle, get over here and see. We just angle this down to about her elbows. We don't want it really long. We be, just be careful with these girls that you don't know <laughs> anything important. Yeah, they'll let you know real fast. But so what you're getting is just a nice clean line. So I do it on one side. And remember, I clipped up to here, so we know this is all fine back here. And then we, um, then I go and do the other side the exact same way. Again, we're gonna take a, take it from up here. We're just, whoops, just like <laughs> See, that. <laughs> Sometimes I do it with the clippers. Just. Yeah, just. Yeah. Oh. I'm going to hold it. <laughs> she's got sagging <laughs> boobies because she's had a couple letters. Okay. And we brush again. Oh, that nipple there. <laughs> yeah, but I'm going to go. I'm just going to take this off here. But again, you see how nice and clean it is. When you brush this down in. 
and I take it to about the elbow again that right where you cut it so it's not really it's not going to get dirty and it's not going to make the dog look prettier So this is Piggy now, thinking she's a show dog. She was at one time, and this is, she thinks this is way easier. And you can see she's Voila. in a show clip. <laughs> but and she's, she's got her COVID weight on her. Too. Yeah, she's a, a little bit. Now, what I would suggest is give her a bath when you're done to get all the loose hairs out so they don't start itchy and scratchy. And then... Um, if it looks bumpy after the bath, you can take the seven just over the jacket again, just to smooth it out. Sometimes they need it, sometimes they don't. But um, the bath just helps get all the sticky outies out and, and uh, makes them a little bit more comfortable. But if you do it beforehand, that's fine too. So. Hello, can you all hear me now? Um, thank you very much, Kathy. That was great. And your excellent videographer made it even better. Now I'd like to open things up for a discussion. You can unmute yourselves and just, uh, you know, speak up and hopefully Kathy and uh, other people on the call can kind of fill in with uh, answers to your questions. Anybody have any questions? I do. Um, did you, I mean, I thought I saw that you just used a number seven and a number 10, uh, blade. Was that right? Or did I miss something somewhere? Those are the only two blades I use. Okay. Sometimes if I'm on a real sparse coat, I'll use a five instead of a seven. Okay. Um, it, it's how long you want them to be. Sometimes in, if it's really cold in the winter, I'll go down to a five, but a seven oh. kind of leaves it, um, like a good, a good maintenance length and, and the 10 and the 10 or the 15 you can use interchangeably but those are the only two blades I use okay and then your seven was you said a wide blade and what was the letters behind that um there was a fine yes no or a full, full, or a full and you can use a skip tooth and the oh. skip tooth will give it a little bit more texture five, just, okay yeah. so um I just, just like this year started working with the um, five and the, the wide blade and it really goes fast because you're covering like a third more of the dog with every swipe. So, and there's really no difference in price. If you haven't bought one and you're thinking about it, they're, they're both the same exact price. Hey, Kathy, we can't see you. All we can see is this jeans. <laughs> You're talking and we're looking at Jean. Hi, Jean. <laughs> I'll hold it now, okay? Then you can you can look at Kathy. How's that? That's kind of scary. Can you see Kathy now? Yeah. It's nice to see who was ever talking. It seemed kind of odd for us to see you while she was talking. <laughs> floating away. <laughs> Any other questions? Kathy. I have... Oh, go ahead. Um, do you have a boy that you can show us how to yes. do the, the private yeah, home? Yeah. Yeah. That's my number trying to get Tally wrote them. Yeah, Jean's going to go get Tony, I think, and I'll, we'll do a real quickie on the boys. We were just mm -hmm. talking about that earlier, that we should have probably put a boy up on the table, too. Um, you know, the one thing that I wanted to emphasize is when you're coming down the shoulder, I don't know if I said that, and I said, go to the elbow. It'll dip in a little bit, but I don't want you to dip in. I want you to always go flat so that when you blend the shoulder then into the leg, it's continual. It doesn't dip in and then come back out. Yeah, Does you did a good job. I thought of explaining that in the video. Okay, good. I wasn't sure if, if that came across. And, and so on the tummy, you used a pin. Yes. But can you review again how far you went with the clippers and then you used the thinning shears? Yeah. Um, you know, I guess when I take the blade up, you know, you can feel like the end of the rib cage. Uh -huh. And I can, it's kind sure of where right I here. stop. Here, we have Tony up on the table right now. Let me see if I can show you. 
Hi, Tony. <laughs> he's like, what are you doing to me? So his oh, rib cage is Tony. like right, is stopping right here. He's a right. little bit short couple. So I would take that like down to here. With okay. a boy, it's kind of easy because you just kind of stop in front of the, his okay. little penis. But you just kind of stop at the rib cage, like on the bottom. And then this is where you would go um, and take it take it down with your scissors. And and that's just, I mean, you leave that about an inch long there? Um, not even, not that, even that. Like about okay. a half an inch. I take that pretty close. Do you want to okay. yeah. yeah. I'll be right back. Here, get the, get the, here, get those other ones. Yeah. Hold and on, she's going to show you how to trim his, the sanitary on a boy. <laughs> Please. Is this, um, is, is this camera aimed okay? I can't tell. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, these are, I didn't realize how noisy those clippers were until I was listening to the video. So I apologize for that. These are just my little wall clippers. These rechargeables. Yeah. They're rechargeables and they're cordless, great for dog shows. And they're real, they're a lot quieter. This one's a five in one blade. You can go anywhere from 10 up to 30. So you have to kind of be careful. Um, I, again, keep it on the 10. I go the same when the hair grows. Kathy, I've got your elbow. Okay. Can you see okay? I can't tell. No, I'm seeing her arm rather than... Her arm really well. Oh, oh, okay. Up or down? How's that? Try up here, down. I, I, can you see now? No. No, but oh. it's on the other side. Uh, I'm gonna lift him up and see that. All right. I, okay. This is with the iPad, okay. so I I don't know how to direct the camera part because it's only on the one side. Okay. That's no, good. So it, that's good. This is okay. good. Okay. And you just cut. You just go the same. Always go the same way the hair is growing. And I go all the way down to the flap. You know where the flap is right there. I, it's basically where the can meets the black. I take that all off because. That just gives them a nice clean area. And then down here, I go into the inside of the legs again, like I did the female. Okay, he's heavy. <laughs> okay, then when I, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna walk back here. When I do his testicles. Tell me how to go up or down. Okay. Kathy's arm I'm is in the way. We can't see anything. Oh, there you go. Okay. So I'm just cleaning them off again, the way the hair is growing around them. And I keep the blade flat. I don't dig Take in. Tail up. I don't up a little dig higher, in. Jean. Jean, up a little <laughs> higher? Yeah. How's that? Better. Okay. Because I can't see. I'm, I'm doing this blind here. <laughs> Good job for being so blind. <laughs> so now you can see he's pretty clear mm -hmm. uh -huh. and I just go all the way around and it's a little bit this is a little bit of a tight blade for coming down his butt so I would have done this with the seven but you can see now how nice and clean they are And the boys usually stand really still at this point because <laughs> they don't want you to miss. <laughs> so, pick that tail up. Can't there. see. There. Okay. Do, can Can everybody see how that looks there? Yes. And then I'll show you underneath. And then underneath, over back here, Jim. You can see he's nice and clean. If then you have to go back and just touch it up, you can just go back. There, and he's all done. Did that help? Yes. Okay. Okay. You can so. put that down and hold this. I'll put him away. Now, what about like like on a pet, like between their um, their pads on their feet? Do you 
recommend scissoring or not doing that for a pet or we have a toe blade too. I, I do have a toe blade which is a real narrow blade that i can get in they do that for poodles a lot uh -huh. but I, I usually just take my scissors this is a I, toe blade see how it's just the no we're not seeing the blade oh, where are you at where am I up or down i don't know can you see that? There we go. Up. Up. You stand up. Oh. Yeah. So that's what the toe blade, see it's narrower here. So you can get in. A little lower. Oh, yeah. A little lower. There you go. Yeah, there. No. Nope. <laughs> you stand up. I'll go lower. All right. <laughs> see what we got. Kathy, lower. You know, lower. Lower, Kathy. Lower. Lower, Kathy. Kathy, lower. Lower, lower, Kathy. Kathy, lower. <laughs> like down towards your waist. Yeah. There, there you go. go. <laughs> Okay, everybody quiet so we can see their picture. Kathy, say something so you come up. Okay, can it, can anybody see Perfect. this now? Okay, great. This is a toe blade. You can use it. I don't like to use it, especially in the winter, because I think the hairs inside the, the pads protect them from snow and ice. Yeah, I but I, um, you can take, it's, it's a call. But it, that, for me, I scissor the pad flat so that um, there's still hair in here to protect, but he's not like dragging stuff in or getting stuff caught on it. And then also when you do that, you can start your um, template to go around the foot. Thanks, anybody else have questions? <laughs> Comments? Anybody do anything differently that you'd like to share? Yeah, I have a, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to ask about um, clean, giving them a bath before or after. It looks like it sounds like you recommended after, but are there any? Um, yeah. Um, if you're doing a grooming shop, you know your groomers they'll usually wash them first because a clean coat is a lot easier on your blades. But mostly. Both Kathy and I both usually clip the dog and then give them a bath so that they go home and they're not dropping all those little hairs, you know, like when you pet them and you get a handful of hair. You know, when you go to the beauty shop and they cut your hair and then you itch a little bit because the yeah. coat is, um, you know, because your hair is like falling. And yeah. that's kind of the same with the dog. If you get all those little sticky outies off of them, it just makes them a little bit more comfortable. But there, it's I not. I guess, it's what works. Them, I guess you could blow all that off with a blow dryer too. <laughs> yeah, you could. Yeah, yeah. And it is, you know, a clean coat is a lot easier on your clipper blades, you know. And you should, if you can, if you can always do the furnishings clean. Yeah. That makes a huge difference. Yeah. So. Thank you. So what happens on the top of their nose? Anything? Just a little clippering? Nope. No clippering. No clippering. I mean, not clippering, but uh, the thinning shears. Um, they're not on the dog. But okay. I don't know they have a lot of hair. Okay. Yeah. It, it, it should be even. Like, right, he's grown out a little bit, but it's like, see how this is kind of even? Can you see I, there? Let me know. Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah. You don't, want, you don't want it bare like how they do schnauzers. You so want to leave some hair there. Kind of a flat look. So, yes. Yeah, so you always want to end up looking like a brick. You know, they should have a brick head. So, you know, if you t if you took this off, then you're gonna, you know, have like your planes will be. Plane. Yeah, Kathy, you know, really I, great planes. I guess I would do. Kathy, when you're buying thinning shears, are there choices or are they all the same? Um, so we like the 40, 42, the yeah, 46, the, the 42 or the 46 tooth works well for me. I was fighting with those, those thinning shears. They kept, uh, sticking when I was working on Peggy's face. Those are cheap. Um, yeah. So I apologize for that because they, I really had to keep working them, but the 42 or the 46 is fine it, because you, you can, the smaller, the smaller, the, the tooth width. It means that you're going to take less hair off and you have a better chance of, I'd rather go back and take it off again and take it off again and take it off again versus going in and chopping and then it's gone and you, you don't have anything to come back and blend with. These are good ones. These ones there, that's the ones you should have been using. Yeah. 
Is there a brand you recommend? Uh, well, the rose, rose, what were the rose ones that we used to get all the time? These ones here are, I can't read it. They're so old, you know, I you can't can read get it anymore. A good pair of sitting shoes you can get for around 50. Christensen 50, has a nice one. Out. You can go crazy and yeah. get a pair for 400. I think yeah. that's overkill. This is, I have a but, pair of Christensen um, ones here. Those but, are the good ones. Yeah, are these good. are really good. Yeah. So, you know, for as much, it depends on how much you're going to clip. Like we have good ones because we're, we've always got dogs on the table, but um, if I bought some cheap ones and those are the ones that weren't Yeah, really good. they were very good, but these are really good. You'll get a nice clean edge. It'll look like they aren't, you know, you won't see a blade mark. You can blend easier with it. And like I said, 50 is $75 on the kimchi's The kimchi's, of course, are really good, yeah. but they're $400. Yeah, you know, no. I don't even have a pair of kimchi's. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I have a um, really good... Can I, yeah. can I just add, there's a, there's a really good site if you want affordable. It's called Affordable Grooming Shears. Yeah, and um, it has, yeah, it, it has that's decent where shears. <laughs> that's okay. where we get our blades. If you can see on here, it says AGS. Yeah, affordable. Grooming yeah, shoes. and they're you know they're really in fact sometimes they are very good. Very sometimes good it's prices. cheaper for us to buy a new blade than it is for us to get them sharpened. So yeah. that is a great site. Thank yeah. you, Marianne or Mary Ellen. I'm sorry. <laughs> so you know the other thing that I wanted to talk about, and I don't know if I said it clearly enough too, when I talked about pillars coming down on the foot, some people will take the foot and they'll like do this. So, it's so that looks angle. like they're standing on tiptoes and then it starts. So it's like, like narrow here and then puffed up here. And they look like they're, they're like little ballerinas. We want pillars. We want it to look like they don't have any feet at all. So you want to bring that straight down to the ground. You don't want to take it down and come back into the foot. Kathy, I always have a chat. chat. I'm always challenged by the elbows. Do you have any special <laughs> tips? You know, I, I think that's what I was talking about before earlier. When you're coming down with your clippers, don't come, you'll feel that muscle there too. Don't come in at the, bring it straight down to the elbows. So you're coming down, you'll have a little bit of a gap, leave that hair, and then the elbows start right there. And then when you're doing the furnishings, that elbow is your line to come down to the down to the uh, ground. But don't. But you see some dogs that they come in, they're real tight in here, and then they kind of come out where the where the bone is. That's because they went into this area instead. So you can even see on him, he's shorter here, but he's a little longer here, and that's showing you that that blade. You just take that blade straight down, and then if you know this, and this is even. And this goes in a little bit, so that here that makes it look like it's all one. All right, bye. <laughs> hey, I just went out to that uh, website, and there's a lot of uh, they're having a big sale. It looks like, like half price. Oh, is it? Is it go? Don't tell Don't clippers. Tell yeah, I, I buy from them all the time. Don't tell you. I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for clipper, clipper blades and scissors. So, so um, I have a question. Yes. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I have um, Bailey and Bentley from Kim Fox. Yeah. Yeah. And um, so I'm trying to 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 clip them, and I'm using the seven. And then the tend to clean them up a little bit, but how how long do you think a blade? Uh, how many clippings can you get out of a blade? If they're <sighs> clean, you should get five or six clippings out of a blade. Maybe even more than that. Maybe okay. more if okay. you oil them and spray them a lot. And we use clipper. We use the red dip um, after every grooming, you know, to clean our blades with. Um, yeah, I think. You run your blade yeah. through it while the while yeah. the butt's running. I, yeah, I, I use that yeah. and then wipe them yeah. off real good. Yeah. yeah, and make sure your blade never gets too hot. If it, if your oh, blade yeah. gets hot, 
put it on the floor, let it rest, put take a break, but don't ever put a hot blade on the dog. No, I bought, an, I bought an extra set of clippers because in yeah. the summertime, there's no way around that unless you have a bag of ice. Yeah. You know, yeah. You know, we do that. Yeah. On a grooming day, we have clippers all over the floor. <laughs> you know, while well, one's cooling, we're working with another set. So, okay. yeah, so but it's, I, really, it's really important. And then, and the clipper will even get hot in your hand. So you really yeah. want to, you really want to avoid um, hot clippers. Usually so I put that, it against my wrist, like you would a baby bottle. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because I don't want to burn them. I've had dogs burn before and that's not yeah. that nice. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. And if you should, um, that caldecine powder is usually good to put on them. Helps cool them down if they get a burn, you know, a hot spot clipper burn. Oh, okay. I haven't had one in a long time, but. Yeah. <laughs> knock on wood, yeah. Yeah, knock on it wood. It happens to everybody, especially if you have a dog with really not, not good leather, you know, like not really tough skin. Those are the ones to burn. Or when I had my grooming shop, you know, we just cringed when poodles came in because they had oh, pink skin. Right. So um, we don't have that problem quite as much as a Welsh, but we don't want to take any chances. Either. Okay. Thank you. And you're welcome to come over. You're close. Uh, okay. We like to see our boy. Oh, <laughs> he's a tension whore. He's, uh, he, was, yeah. he was sitting in my lap half the time to do the whole thing, but of course, he wouldn't face the camera. He had his back. <laughs> this is his brother. Yeah. This is his brother. Okay, Tony, yeah. Tony, yeah. So. Yeah, apparently he's, he's a character. <laughs> <laughs> we do miss Kim. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I would have known her. You would love her. She is very nice. Um, what's funny with Bailey... Um, because I've had them two years now, but with Bailey, she would sit, we would sit in the, the living room watching TV and Bailey be in my lap, of course, and she'd sit across from me and she'd look at me like, I know you're not my mom, but, you're okay, but you're okay. Aww. And just recently, she just started snuggling with me. So that's kind of nice. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah. Thank you so much for taking them in. Oh, you're welcome. They came into my life at the perfect time too. So <laughs> because I had just lost my Welsh like six months before that, but she was, she had so many health problems. It was like <laughs> last year of her life was really, whoo. Oh, so Aww. sorry. But yeah, I learned a lot from, from my first. <laughs> <laughs> so. Okay. so I have a question. I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh. I, I actually have two questions. One is um, the clippers I have had, they have two speeds. Yeah. Which one do you use? You know, high. I have yeah. two speeds. We use too, high too, and I always time. use high. I, I mean, I thought, oh my gosh, this is wonderful, the two speed clipper. And I'll be really honest with you, I always use the high. And, and the other thing is, um, I've, I've been stripping for a long time. Uh, Oh, the way that came out. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. I haven't. I, <laughs> Do you use a pole? <laughs> <laughs> it's kind. It's funny. Just you guys would would appreciate this. Um, I I went to the first dog show in since COVID, and um, when I when I went in the ring with Nora, um, the dogs obviously are in front and the bitch is behind and he, and somehow um, the judge got mixed up and he was trying to get me to go in front of one of the dogs and I literally yelled across the whole field I said I'm a bitch <laughs> and, and everybody looked at me and I go oh oh I said well I'm not she is you know it was like I was looking, so there I go again saying I'm a stripper you know um, anyway um you know, clip, years, years, and, and, you catalog years and years ago, um, the, in my other house, the only good lighting I had was in my overhead light in my bedroom. And so we set up a grooming table in there and I was stripping out a dog. And Eric and uh, Ann had come over and brought their puppy and I was working on there and he got a phone call and I could hear him say, oh no, we're in Kathy's bedroom. Her and Ann are stripping. And I'm like, please clean that up. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So anyway, so I've been doing that in this, the clipping and scissoring. I do that on Bridget now. 
and um, and it's a new thing for me. Um, one of the things that I'm not sure how to do always is the blending, and also how never to leave like a like sort of a line with the clippers, meaning like you yeah. know, like go down. I mean, I guess I just have to keep going or over it. Fast. Yeah, just go slow. You're going too fast. And follow the yeah. hair. Let the like, clippers do like the work. When you're doing this part here, and you're coming here, you follow it down. You don't try to go this way. You always follow down. You follow down. And let the clippers brush, do the work. You follow down. And then sometimes after the bath, the hair, the lines will disappear. But then after you've clipped a couple times, you're trained the coat how you want it. And it'll it'll fall in place a whole lot better too. But the biggest, the biggest thing is don't ever follow the grain of the hair. Don't ever go against it or don't ever go perpendicular to it. You always want to go with the grain of the hair. Is this video still okay for everybody? Yes. Yes. Okay, the so other I thing I found it. is if any time you change the angle of the blade, of course, you're changing the depth that you're cutting. And so then you have a risk of creating lines if you don't always right. put it at the and same I, angle. I just, Kathy, what you said yeah. is exactly what I was doing wrong. Um, it's funny, with stripping, <laughs> I would never do that. But <laughs> with clipping uh, <laughs> along the sides, I was absolutely yeah. going straight versus down. Uh, okay. Yeah, just yeah, if, if you look at how they yeah. just follow the curve, follow the rib cage. And you know, another thing that helps Mary with that changing, laying the blade flat on the coat. Instead and don't like, don't dig in, don't, don't go down. Them. You know, just if you always lay the blade flat. Where's that clipper? Just kind of like this. Then you, then the coat is usually more even. And then um, when you go, get to a spot, you don't have to turn it yeah. down. Just when on. you get to a spot like right here where it's going to go in, you just keep it flat right till you get to the furnishings. You don't ever dig in. You always keep everything flat. And that'll help. I mean, I won't tell you what my first dogs look like. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know, it's hair, it's going to grow. But that stops, that stops that kind of wavering in and out. If you just always remember that the clipper is always flat to the dog's skin. Okay. Thank you. Oh, thanks for coming. <laughs> Are there any final comments? We're at a little bit over an hour and I don't want to keep you uh, much oh, longer, but final comment. One, one last thing I just wanted to ask. I, I just clipper the side, the edge of her ear and I noticed that you scissored. I'd be petrified I would cut the, the ear leather, <laughs> but with the clipper, I feel better because what I do is I, I make it go up against my thumb. Um, uh -huh. Is that a bad idea? If you oh. like the way it looks, that's absolutely fine. I, you know, I'm kind of an old school and I want that real sharp edge. And a lot of times if you're pinching, if you've got your, uh, if you've got your fingers here, you're pinching the end of the ear so you, or the edge of the ear so you know to cut above your fingers yeah you know and and if if you if you like to do it with a blade and you're happy with the look that's fine i like a i like you know when you're stripping how you peel the edges of the ears i like that look so i've learned over you know i've been doing this for 50 years so it's not like i you know this is not like my first dog but i i'm i can close my eyes and feel the leather I don't recommend that to people, but um, so I'm pretty confident in what I do. I know when when I get to ears here, a lot of my friends will turn around and go, "We can't watch you do that." So, <laughs> and if you do nick an ear, they bleed a lot, but the dog will not yeah. bleed to if, death. Yeah, if you just nick them, put some quick stop on it. Yeah. Um, like to, like it. I told Jean it's probably going to be real frustrating because Peggy stands like a statue so she lets me do anything I want first time around if you get one jumping around here and there it's going to take you a little bit longer a little <laughs> bit more patience a little bit more cursing but um you know you go and if you get like um if you get frustrated stop you can always come back and do a little bit more later on but if it's how you like it's a pet groom it's what you're comfortable with it's what Bridget's comfortable with it's um you know, it's all good. That's just how I was taught. 
Well, thank you very much. And thank you for, it was a great video too in the presentation. Well, thank Mary, you. thank you too. Thank you. Uh, these have been fun. Please join us again on June 28th, where Jean Callens will be the star. <laughs> Along with I, won't, I won't be jumping around with this camera. <laughs> you did a great job on videography. No. Um, I was impressed with the, the video and how you were able to make sure we saw what we needed to see. Uh, but anyway, our next Zoom groom is uh, on Monday, June 28th at 7 p.m. And it uh, is the basic pet strip. So um, hopefully you'll be able to join us and come, you know, prepared to ask questions and to, you know, if you have a dog you want to put on the table and do a little demo with, that's fine too. So, you know, Mary, if they have any questions and want to put that on um, the face page, I'll try to respond to those too. Perfect. Yes, I'll get the um, video up probably tomorrow so that you can see it again from beginning to end. It will be on the Welsh Terrier Education Network and the Mid-States Welsh Terrier Club Facebook pages. Um, so you can ask questions under that and, I get, and I'll try and monitor any questions and I'm sure Kathy will too, so that we can make sure you get answers. Great. Okay, great. Thank, Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.